Hi everyone and welcome to Talking Good Game. It's the match preview of West Ham United against Leicester City. Gone on match day two, but we're sticking with the same question as always. Your thoughts on the Foxes, please. I've been really impressed with them. I like to take, when I say impressed with them, and I'm talking in this transfer window, I like to take the big clubs out of the equation. Manchester United are going to buy Jadon Sancho. Chelsea are going to buy Lukaku and so on and so forth with those with those big clubs. But it's actually that next rung down. As a West Ham fan, I'm looking at and thinking, OK, what are you doing? And I think they're almost acting like a big club, although albeit not 100 million, because what they're doing is, and I, take, I think they're almost the only club outside of the, the big clubs, well, Tottenham as well, actually, to be fair, that have... Um, <laughs> Sorry. So uh, you shouldn't have laughed. I was gonna keep a straight face all through that. Okay. Um they're the only they're, they're Tottenham are the only clubs that aren't big clubs that have actually spent money without bringing loads of money in, if you know what I mean. And I've been really impressed with that. And for them to do that, so they brought in I can't remember, but they definitely brought in Pats and Dakar. But they've also brought in, and that's a good sign in a lot of clubs in Europe were looking at this guy. And I just bought him and I just paid the money. And it's to do with that ethos. What's Jamie Vardy? Jamie Vardy is a rapidly quick striker. So what have they done? They've scoured Europe and got in a rapidly quick striker who's going to go in and eventually replace Vardy. You spoke about this before, Gio. They sell Harry Maguire. It's OK. They got Sonshu there, right? This is more of the same, all right? This is the, this is the succession plan for Vardy going. And they've also brought in a guy called Samir, which a, a, a few people might, might not have seen him. All I can say is he's like a Patrick Vieira type player. Very, very good player, this guy. He's one of, very rarely I've heard of somebody. I, I know this guy. I've seen him play on a couple of occasions. They've got this guy, very impressive. So he's going to go in there and he's he's not quite, he's, I guess he's more indeed than Tillemans, but he breaks forward a bit more. But he's there to do that job. So they've got a backup there for this guy as well. And they're just spending money without without selling anybody. Now, I understand that there's some speculation with um, with Madison, but I I think whether they sold Madison or didn't sell Madison, they would have bought these players. So it's a case of, hold on, we've almost got the top four. Do you know what? We're going to go for it a bit more this season. So actually, let's go and spend 60, 70 million on some players. And I'm, I'm so impressed with them, mate. I really am. I think their, their transfer business has been exceptional. I'm I'm looking forward to the day they do something wrong. Um, the last few years we do previews, we've come on here and just praise Leicester non-stop from start to finish, and we're going to do it again today. It's hard not to. Every transfer window they get it right. In between every transfer window, they get it right again. And this is a club with massive strategy to deal with as well. And they've just dealt with everything. Everything's continued to run smoothly as possible. And from an outsider looking in, you just think. I wish, if only, that kind of thing. Could we not yeah. do that? Can we please see a bit of that West Ham kind of thing? Um, and like you said, the succession to Jamie Vardy is important because they had the succession to Maguire, but that was selling Maguire. And it's probably a bit easier because you've got money to spend there. And with Jamie Vardy, I imagine the plan is he retires at Leicester City or he eventually departs on a free or for not very much money. You're not going to be able to replace him with the cash you get for Jamie Vardy. So the challenge is you're not going to have 50 million in your back pocket. So you're going to have to go and replace him somewhat cheaply, in which they have done. Like you said, uh, Dak has under 30 million. He's about 28 million, 25, 27 million, or whatever it cost him. And he's touted as one of the best attacking players in European football. And they've gone and got him. And the mad thing is, he, despite him being that good, he's not even good enough to go straight into their starting 11. So you go on the bench and you earn your spot in that starting team. Good luck, there's lodge and Jamie Vardy. And then eventually, once Jamie Vardy is struggling to play games and that, it's fine. We take him out. We put we put Dak in, and Vardy's rested. They've got the European campaign in Europa League as well with us, where they've now got a top striker for the Premier League and a different top striker for Europa League, and that's without even talking about Ian Acho as well. Um, they've got they've always had a really really good eleven, and I've always been some sort of iffy about their squad depth because I'm not the biggest fan of say Iose Perez or Marco Brighton. I think they're good Premier League players, but that's it. And I think if you want to step up to regular Champions League contenders, you need a really good player in every single position. And that's the difference between them and, say, Chelsea or Man United or Man City, and probably just those clubs as well, because I think they've overtaken Tottenham and Arsenal. I think, forget top six, it's now top, it's either top seven or a top four with Leicester in there and not the other two. The North London clubs are almost out of the 
conversation as far as I'm concerned. Leicester are ahead of those two sides now. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I'd be surprised if come the end of the season, Leicester are not fourth in the Premier League. That would be, I would consider, well, we'll get onto that in just a second. But what they've done now this summer, they've added that squad depth now, actually. And they've now got better players in every position. And it's very, very impressive. And of course, Harvey Barnes signed a new contract this week at Leicester. While it's not a signing, it was another fantastic piece of business by Leicester City. Anyway, before we get on to it, uh, kickoff is at eight o'clock on Monday, which means at seven o'clock, bang on seven o'clock, Gonzo, you're going to get a notification on your phone from what I consider to be the number one football app. Absolutely, fan. and that notification is going to ping up, and it's going to say, "Well, it's not going to." I was going to say, "It's going to say hello, Gonzo." It probably won't say that, but it certainly will give us the lineups for both teams. Fortunately, and five minutes before that comes out, myself and Gio are going to be live in the build-up show. But the One Football app is fantastic because you can aggregate it and you can tailor it to your own specifications. I've just got West Ham switched on, so an hour before kickoff, the One Football app notifies me, says, "This is your team," and just before. We're about to buy maybe Jamie Vardy in 10 years' time from Leicester City. The One Football app will ping and say, you've just bought a 50-year-old Jamie Vardy from Leicester City for tuppence, and it will let me know. Get to download it today. The link to the One Football app is in the description and the pinned comments. So it doesn't matter if you support West Ham or Leicester. Get it downloaded and tailor it to your needs. Right, transfer window. We spoke about Leicester, but I want to speak about them, about the transfer window in detail. We've done Dakar. We've done your summary. But they've also done signed Ryan Bertrand for free. And also, they've gone and got Vestergaard for fifteen million. But it's not so much the player; it's how quick they move. For Fana got injured about a week later. Vestergaard was holding up the Leicester City shirt in line to make his debut on Monday night. But we're just going to throw more plaudits at them again. But this is just unbelievable plan. And this is a this is a club that knew what centre back they wanted without even wanting a centre back. Well, it's just slick. Isn't it? Um, it's just slick um, and, and operationally impressive. They, they, they knew they knew that they would have taken Vestergaard because he would have been on a list of candidates that they would have had should this eventuality happen. You like to think there's no surprise. Leicester City aren't a club that are surprised. You know, I, mean, I made the joke this morning about um, about David Moyes walking into training and saying, "Where's Mikel Antonio?" And someone saying, "Oh, he's he's playing for Jamaica." What? Well, what do you mean? He's not Jamaican, is he? And I, you know, I just. You know, you would you get the impression sometimes that West Ham are surprised that something would happen. Leicester City are not surprised. There's a succession plan as we discussed. This thing with Vestergaard is good, and it's all. It's I've often said it's not all about spending money. I mean, they spent good money on Dakar. Why not get Bertrand on a free? That's a really that's a really really good signing actually, and gives them double options at both fullbacks. Well, this is really important going into a European campaign, of course. So. It is highly impressive, Gio. And I, I, just to go back on what you said about Dakar going on the bench, this is the Harry Kane argument, which is Tottenham can't sign a replacement for Harry... Not a replacement. Tottenham previously haven't been able to sign a striker because that person's not going to want to sit on the bench and be understudy to Harry Kane. And it's currently... I call it a Harry Kane excuse, but at the moment it could also be the Mikel Antonio excuse because we're hearing this about Mikel Antonio. West Ham are not, can't get a striker in because no one's going to want to sit on the bench and play second fiddle to Mikel Antonio. Uh, and this just blows that out of the water because if you can, you can do that. Uh, and I, I'm pleased it blows it out of the water because I think it's a ridiculous excuse because any of these players, if you're a footballer, if you're good at anything you do, you're going to have a bit of an ego. You, you should have. You don't want to be a shrinking violet in there. They're going to fancy themselves. And you know what? Vestergaard should want to go in there and think, well, I'll, hold on a second. I'm I'm that good. I've got that much faith in myself that if I do go in there, even for Fafana gets fit, I'm still going to be playing in this team. As, as you say, just you keep on praising Leicester City, really, don't you? Yeah, I think for 60 million, signing those four players for 60 million is a bargain. I think if if it works out right, Patson Daka is going to be worth 60 million on his own in a couple of years' time, kind of thing. The other three are almost like in, in, irrelevant, then, kind of thing. Like you said, the centre backs, and once they're all fit, you're going to have Evan Sayunchu, Fafana, and Vestergaard as their centre backs. Four Premier League standard starters every week right backs, Pereira, Castagna, left backs, Luke Thomas, Ryan Bertrand. I mean, this is just. 
they could field two 11s now, Leicester, and both of them would be able to compete in the Premier League. They would both survive relegation on their own. I think they've done incredible business this window, and I'm not even sure they're finished yet, because like you said, they've got the James Madison thing. It almost worries me as a West Ham fan, because... We are in the market for a centre-back. Leicester needed one. They went and got one. Now, would we want the best to guard? Possibly not. But he was available for £15 million. They've snatched him. And I worry that if Madison does go, Leicester City all of a sudden want an attacking midfielder, which is what we're in the market for as well. I can almost guarantee you they will move faster than us. And no, almost no messing. Go in. We'll get the deal done. We'll agree the deal. We'll get out with the player. Happy days, bish, bash, bosh. Um, Champions League got to be the target for them this season, though, I think. Um, top four has to be a finish. It has to be the aim, given the squad available. The manager's a top manager as well. And I think they've got a, I think they've got to go for silverware or some some sort, Gonzo. Uh, yeah, well, look, they've got to aim for it. And they've, they've improved. As I've maintained on numerous occasions, we're worse than last season because we are a player or two down. Leicester are better than last season for the reasons that we've just given. I think Leicester's biggest problem is going to be that Manchester United are better, Man City are better, um, Chelsea, you know, it's Liverpool. Oh, Liverpool have signed, they've signed Canata, haven't they, as, as centre-half, and they've got Van Dijk coming back. So I think it's going to be really, really hard for them. That has to be their ambition, but I do think they're good. And I think the win against Wolves is a great case in point, which is they're Leicester are capable of beating all the other teams in the Premier League. I'm not saying they can't beat Liverpool or Man City. I think they'll they'll give them good games. I mean, they beat City in the Charity Shield, right? Yeah, and they beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Sorry, uh, there you go. So I mean, they they can um, they can do this. They can they can beat those teams. But you do get the impression they're going to swat everybody else aside. They're going to play Aston Villa. I mean, crikey, we've got them coming up, which is why we're doing this preview, but they're going to play Aston Villa, they're going to play Wolves, they're going to play Brighton, and, and they have, they've got the ability to crush these guys. Top four has to be their ambition. I do think it's going to be really hard for them to do it, though, just because they spent £60 million really, really well. If everyone else that's already finished above them is going to be spending £100 million, £200 million, then it's going to be hard. Yeah, I, I agree with that to some extent. I do think Champions League has to be the aim. I think fifth place minimum. Um... They've got a taste of silverware now, won the FA Cup and that. You know, when pe- people like Ferguson that speak about the mentality that uh, the players change once they've had a taste, they, they know they can do it then. You get over that stumbling block and I think that'll do Leicester huge benefits going into this season. Um, the Europa League is one that surely Brendan Rodgers will be eyeing up thinking we can go on and win that. They had a decent campaign last season in the Europa League and that was with him rotating players and stuff. Now he's got better players to rotate. I expect them to be serious contenders to, to win that Europa League as well. A, a, a kind group stage draw for them. And they'd be one, they must be one of the favourites anyway, um, regardless. Anyway, players, you might pick a couple. Uh, Pereira, and I mentioned him all the time. I, I always liked him from um, even you know before he came over to this country. Fantastic player. I wish we'd have got him. Again, that showed ambition three years ago. For, you know, and that's the start, I think, spending stuff like I think they've spent 17 million. Three or four years ago, spending 17 million on a fullback. There you go. There, there's ambition for you. Um, so many good players, Gio. So it's pointless talking about Jamie Vardy. He's, he's obviously a really, really good player. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, Tillemans. Let's go, let's go with Tillemans as a a passer of the ball as a reader of the game as an intelligent player as a like a like, like a conductor in an orchestra you know he, he's just making it he, he'll he'll decide whether the play is is spread from right to left he'll he'll decide at what point the attack at what point the ball goes to the attackers um so the old, he reminds me a little bit of a couple of the old brazilian 1970s players which is basically Slow, 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 quick, quick. And, you know, and it'll change, just change in the pace of the game, um, like a metronome in the middle. Really impressive. Very, very good technique as well. And again, you know, let's, let's also praise that he's a player that other clubs would have wanted. And I think it says an awful lot for Leicester that actually, I'm sure a lot of players would want someone like Tillemans or pick your player from Leicester, wherever it is. But I think this is the suspicion is that you might look at Leicester if you're another club and think there's just almost no points. It's just we're just not going to get get him because that club it's going to be hard to take that player away from there unless you are a very very top club. Um, yeah, just got some some wonderful wonderful players, Gio. And I, I, I tell you what, let's let's go with his his partner as well and Didi who compliments him perfectly just by shutting up shop and 
just st- stopping the thwarting the, the attack of other teams. But you, you could name loads of players, mate. Yeah, I think Thielen is a good example as to what went wrong with West Ham a little bit because they originally loaned him from Monaco, went back, and everybody thought, well, good luck signing him because now everybody knows about it. You've taken him into penalty, you've showcased him. And Leicester basically said, well, we don't care. We're going to go and sign him. They did just that. We did it with Jeff Lingard, brought him in, gave him the platform, sent him back. And then it was like, oh, well, well, now what? What do we do? Because we can't buy him now because he's too expensive or we don't know if we'll get him now. Um, Leicester almost had a big club mentality prior to being a big club, if that makes sense. That doesn't mean to be disrespectful to Leicester. What I'm trying to say is you were acting like a Champions League club without being in the Champions League. Um, but anyway, Ed, players in Didi, I think, is the best defensive midfielder in the league. I know that won't be popular with our own fans because of Declan Rice. I think Declan Rice is better at certain things and indeed he's better at certain things. But I think as a defensive midfielder, I think indeed he's the number one in the league for me. I think Harry Barnes is one of my favourite non-West Ham players. He's just so direct and I'm pleased to see him get a chance. He's grabbed his chance. He's stayed in that team. And when, despite players like Madison coming back from fitness, sometimes Barnes keeps his spot and he's one of the first names on the team sheet for Leicester now. Um, he's not the best finisher in the league, but his sort of pace, his power, allows him to have three chances a game. And I always say, I think getting into the the shooting opportunity is harder than you're finishing. It's a bit like the Sadio Mane thing. Mane misses a lot of chances, but it doesn't matter because he's good enough to create three or four chances for himself a game. So it's fine. The other player I will mention is Kasper Schmeichel because a couple of years ago, I will be honest, I thought he was finished. A couple of years ago, I didn't think he was very good anymore. Well, I'll say he wasn't very good. I didn't think he was Leicester standard. Um, whenever I watched him, I thought he just, he was a bit like what Fabianski was with us a couple of seasons ago. He wasn't as commanding or that. But last season, I thought Schmeichel was one of the best keepers in the league and at the Euros as well. I think he was one of the best keepers in the league uh, uh, in the competition. Sorry, I think he's been superb, top, top for form from him. But anyway, enough about Leicester. Time to talk about West Ham. But before we do, this is usually where we promote the boats for the upcoming game, but they're all sold out. Um, the boats are sold out for this Monday, but you can still get a season ticket if you wish to join us for the whole season on the boats prior to games and after weekend games. For a beer, a barbecue, just two minutes from the ground, email us, hammerschat at gmail.com, and we'll give you all the information, and you can decide if you wish to join us for the season or not. Now, Gonzo, this is where we'll discuss the lineup, and I know you're going to say, well, unchanged, but I'm going to throw a curveball at you, and this is what I think Moyes is going to be considering. Last season, we've done the double over Leicester City. Both games, we played three at the back. Okay. Do you so, mate, you think you it? might bring Masuaku back for this one? Well, I've got a second question to this, but would you change it or would you remain with four at the back after Sunday's win at Newcastle? I think I'd, I'd keep it the same. I, I know what you're saying. Uh, yes. Um, no, I would. I would. I'd, I'd keep it the same, actually. I I do I do look at it and I think we'll get to... I don't want to preempt the final bit of the video, which you're going to ask there, but I do... There's an old thing in boxing. Styles make fights. And I do think in some respects, Leicester and teams like that, and, and Wolves are not dissimilar to Leicester in, in the way that they play sometimes. They might be tailor-made for David Moyes' style, if you know what I mean. And I think I, I'll use an example of two clubs, different clubs from the first weekend to highlight that. And it was actually Watford and Aston Villa. And for all Aston Villa's possession and all Aston Villa's flair, they completely played into Watford's hands. And you got the impression that actually, I was watching that, and it wasn't a case of Villa got a shock and then they they tried to get into it. That They could have played a five-hour game there and the same thing just would have carried on repeating. They just would have sucker punched them and sucker punched them and sucker punched them. The question is, how much is the... So I think that's what we can do to Leicester and I think that's what we have done to Leicester the question is how much did the formation have to play in that I don't know I'm not tactically switched on enough to know but I do think we can we can do that sort of thing from within the parameters of four at the back yeah I would stick with four at the back due to lack of options at the left wing back obviously Masuaku is is still coming back. I don't know. I don't think he's fully fit. At time recording, Moyes has not done his press conferences yet. And um, that's how I could also play for the 23s on Monday evening. Yeah. But I don't think he's fit enough to go straight. And he's been out for a while, isn't he, Masuaku? He was out at the end of last yeah. season. It's not like a, he's just missed the opening game. He's missed months of training. He's had no pre-season. Um, so I wouldn't 
so for that reason, I'd stick with four at the back. I could understand. I, I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if Moyes changes it, and I'll give it a reason in a second. Before we do that, would you make any changes to the personnel that beat Newcastle United? No. No, no, no. See, that's, I, that's I, I think I dropped Craig Dawson. I don't think he was good against Newcastle. He was, he was the worst player, I think, yes. I, I he, was, he was crap. I thought he was crap against Newcastle. And Murray played Jamie Vardy, and it just... I get fear thinking about Vardy <laughs> running at Craig Dawson. I, I do. I think... I don't think Diop's necessarily a better centre-back than Craig Dawson. I think they both have their own strengths and weaknesses. But for this game in particular, I think Diop's strengths are more valuable than what Craig Dawson's are. Craig Dawson's fantastic in the air, but I don't think Leicester City are going to be whipping in crosses to Jamie Vardy against Dawson and Bonner. They're going to want to get on the deck and beat them with pace. And that's where D- Dawson's weakness is. He's slow. Uh, I thought he struggled badly against Newcastle. And I thought he struggled at crosses against Newcastle as well. That was the most concerning thing. He wasn't getting beat by pace. Their opening goal come from Dawson losing a, a man in the sixth yes, order for a header. Absolutely. That is concerning. Yeah. And I think last season, I felt with half the squad, I thought Moyes was quite firm. You make a mistake, you're out the team. You get punished. I thought there was a few players, on one hand, there was a few players I thought could make a mistake and still play next week. And I felt Dawson was one of them. You're right. But I never felt I never felt he earned that right. I think he played fantastic when he came in, but that was over, I don't know, six games maybe. And I don't think that's enough to justify keeping a hold of your shirt. Because I felt Bal Buena and Diot would play well, have one bad game, or just test positive for COVID or get an injury, out the team and they stay down. And I thought, well, that's a bit harsh. I felt it was one rule for Dawson and another rule for Diop and Balbuena. Um, and like I thought Dawson was crap against Newcastle. So I'd, I would personally bring in Diop, but that would be the only change I make. So are you ready why I think Moyes might change it? Yeah, I, yeah, I want to hear it, yeah. Why else play for Niles left wing back against Atalanta? Do you ah. think there's a chance Moyes had one eye on the Leicester game already, thinking, I know what I'm doing against Newcastle. But against Leicester, I might need to switch three at the back. This is my last chance to try someone there because Masaraku won't be ready. So I'm going to try Pablo Fanales there. Or am I reading too much into it? Yeah, I think you're reading too much into it. Uh, but you know what? Fair play, mate. If you call it and it's it's right, it's a that's what we're doing, mate. We're doing a video about the game. You've got to guess these things, haven't you? Um yeah, and look, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it. I, David Moyes particularly against Leicester, let's be honest, has earned the right to do what the hell he wants because he could he could say, I've, you know, I've got his number. He could say, I've got Brent, Brendan Rogers' number. I don't make his phone number. And if he beats him this time and it's the third time, then I think you can pretty much say, we know all about bogey teams. We've got many. All right, we beat one of them the other day. Um, we've got, we, we'll be playing Brighton soon enough as well. So we know about bogey teams. There's something in it, isn't there? You know, if you get you get your number over a team or an opposition manager, how many times have you heard those stats? This manager's not beaten this manager in 13 attempts. You've heard it many times. So this is going to be interesting. So he could do what he wants on that one. If he switched three at the back, would he play four nails there? That that would be interesting. I would suspect he wouldn't, but um but stranger things have happened, like Frederick's at right wing. So who knows? I don't want to see it. I just think there must have been a reason he's played for now as left wing back against Atalanta. Because if it was for fitness, then you just wouldn't play three at the back, could you? You would just play with four at the back and put for now's further up the pitch kind of thing. And I'd be a bit, I don't want to see it because I think you're moving what Fernals is good at. Fernals is good at creativity and the build up play. And you'd go back to our goals on Sunday and he was often involved in the, the pass to the guy that got the assist or whatever. Yeah. You know, it was him that gave to Creswell and so on. Um, so I don't want to see Fernandes stuck out on left wing back. Plus, Pereira would be a very tricky customer for him. I think he would almost be man against boy out there a little bit because Fernandes would work hard and he would track him and stuff. And while he does tackle Fernandes, he's not very good at it. Um, I do think he's poor at tackling. He gets stuck in and he, tr- like he does his best, but he gets skinned a lot as well. Um, so for that one, I'm a bit hesitant. So I'd expect Fredericks or Johnson there if we did switch the three at the back. And I can see why Moyes would switch the three at the back because it's worked twice against Leicester mm. City. And what you were, you said you were right. Our style was we'll sit back, we'll hold it, and then we'll go on the counter-attack. But surely a large part of that is down to playing three centre defenders. So you, you fill up the 18-yard box a little bit and there's no room for Jamie Vardy to run in. You know, you've got like a sweeper, essentially. So... If Vardy does make a run, you've got a 
centre centre back can come running on over and cover the, his, his teammates. So be interesting. We'll find out on Monday, I guess. Um, good start for a good test early doors for West Ham and Leicester City. I think going into this one, I think this is a real. I think both had a, a favourable fixture on opening day. I know a, a Wolves can be a tricky one, but I'm not sure it's quite the same now. Nuno is not there. Um, and then obviously us against Newcastle, I think both teams are favourites going into one of our games. I think this one's a bit more evenly contested on paper. Uh, it's an interesting game, isn't it, Where, in terms of the fixtures, in terms of the stature of the of the two clubs and, you know, with the, the UEFA, the already Europa League teams aren't we so I mean that's that's going to be interesting there was nothing between us last season um in terms of the points tally come the end of it so I guess in many respects one of those one of those games that neither club would quite fancy just yet uh we'd all prefer you know some lower down teams but then again it's not we're not playing Manchester City are we so um there there is there is that I, I mean talking about that there is interest in that difference in style because obviously if Leicester play Manchester City or they play Chelsea then they're going to be sort of the underdog for that game whereas in these games and certainly last season they would have been favourites for the game so it does put a different onus a different pressure on it I, I do feel that um I do feel that Moyes probably looks forward to these he, he likes his tactics and you can only assume if you are that type of guy and that's the field that you work in, he probably looks at these things as a puzzle and he probably quite enjoys trying to work out a tactic. I mean, you know, whether it's something that you suggested or the switcher formation or, you know, I, I bet Moyes felt a million dollars after that Aston Villa game when he surprised the Fredericks thing. They shut down, you know, Soufal and Fredericks shut down Grealish and, and, and West Ham come away with a point. So I bet he felt, hey, you know, was, he was up at night scribbling that down. And so I think he probably relishes this, but it is a, it is an interesting game early in the season and actually one that is you get the end you get I mean a draw would sort of suit, suit both teams I have a feeling about that but if one team wins you look at that and think oh that's a I know it's only two games but you think that's a decent start to the season you know yeah I completely agree we've been focusing on what Moyes will do tactically actually there's a big pressure on Ben and Rogers here because you got beat by David Moyes twice last season had you won if you've got four points out of that, I can't remember how the table finished. There's every chance they would have finished in Champions League spaces. Yeah. And you can do that for every game Leicester didn't pick up three points from, of course. But I don't imagine there have been that many teams that have done the double over them last season. I wouldn't be surprised if there was only two or three teams, especially if outside the Super League six. I bet we were the only side to have done the double over Leicester City. So this will be the game that Rogers will be looking at. The guy needs to do something different here. My usual game plan didn't work. And while... The game at London Stadium finished 3 2. That was one of the games we were 3 0 up in, looking comfortable. And he actually whacked in that belter from quite a distance and then scored mm -hmm. in the 91st minute or something. So I think the scoreline was almost a bit misleading in the end. 3 2 sounds like it was close, a bit like what we saw at Newcastle. But it wasn't really. It was relatively comfortable for us. Um, even after the goal, it was 3 1 for 20 minutes or something. It was comfortable for West Ham. So last season, we scored six against them. So Brendan Rodgers, the pressure's probably on him to come up with something different tactically to keep us out and also to pose more of a threat in our, to our goal because at, when we beat them at their place, it was 3 you know, it was a bit of a shock result. Like, wow, look at this. You know, I remember having that bet, that game, Sky bet boosted Jimmy Bardi's odds to have a shot on targets to even, which is usually free money. I remember having a tenner on it, maximum stake, that free money. And um, didn't get a sniff at goal. He got put through on goal in the very last minute and absolutely scuffed it wide. Oh, blood, can you not just want me my money? But anyway, yes, yeah, so I think there's pressure on Rodgers. While we're speaking about the pressure on Moyes, you're right, he'll, he'll relish this, just like he did against Newcastle, second half. We got a hold of St. Maximum just like that in the second half. First half, ran the show. Second half, barely seen him. Moyes will have a similar plan for Leicester City. Um, and we're I'm really looking forward to it. Are you confident? I don't know about confident, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, I think we'll perform well. I think we've got a good team. I really do. I think we'll. I am. Yeah. I, it's hard. I don't think there's much in it. To be fair, despite everything that we've said about their purchasing, but it's squad depth. The difference between the two clubs is squad squad depth. Um, when everyone's fit, eleven against eleven, it's a contest, and I do love a contest, Gio. As you know, I think it's going to be really interesting to to see. I think for different reasons. They're very the managers are chalk and cheese in their philosophy, but they're both good managers. You know, um, obviously Roger's got a bit of silverware, isn't he? I, not, I don't. Obviously, in Celtic, yes, but and, now with the and, with and the, the uh, and he picked his chance for targets early on. <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah, but you know, in in terms of actually, they're they're both good managers. 
Uh, we both have good players. It's going to be really. I mean, it's any. I do think it's anyone's game. So, but as for that reason, I'm, I'm not confident. I'm not lacking confidence because West Ham are crap. It's just we're playing a good team. Yeah, I'm a bit like yourself actually. I wouldn't say I was confident, but I wasn't worried either. I'm just looking forward to. It. I think it helps that we've won against Newcastle. It takes pressure off because you don't want to start the season losing and then have the Europa League games come around with little points on the board a little bit. And I, I agree with what you're saying. I think both teams start in 11. I don't there's too much between them. If you did one of those combined 11s or whatever, I think you'd find it was 5-6 or 7-4 at the very most. Um, but the problem is the bench. And Brendan Rodgers will have more game-changing options on his substitute bench to pick from. And I think this is a good time to play Leicester before their new signings settle in. And they've still got their injuries. They seem to have always have injury problems at Leicester, which I think doesn't get enough credit to Brendan Rodgers, actually, because they still do well, despite missing a lot of players. You know, last season, I think every player was injured at one point. At some point or another, they got injured, yet he still won. We came, we carried picking up points. And I think lesser managers and lesser clubs would have collapsed. And now we play them now, they're still missing players. You know, um, Soyuncu's out, Bofana's out. Ryan Bertrand may still be missing the game through COVID. Um, so Mavi, I'm not sure if he's ready to go yet kind of thing. So there's big losses for them. But at the same time, it's a good time to play West Ham because we've got no new signings. It's as simple as that. We don't have a striker on the bench. We don't have an attacking midfielder on the bench. You know, um, We don't have the 15, 20 million pounds sent back to play alongside of Bonner yet. So it's a good time to play each side. And I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good game. I think there'll be plenty of goals as well. I don't think there'll be any clean sheets in this one. So with that said in mind, Gonzo, may I get your score prediction? Uh, I think I'm going to have to play it safe, Gio. I'll have to go with a Geo prediction, which is a 2-2, my friend. Oh, I was going for a 2-2 as well. We don't often clash on the old score prediction. I think uh, yeah, we're uh, 2-2s tend not to clash. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we generally wear a different coloured 2-2, don't we? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> a bit frillier as well or on the way. Yes, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Monday night, we will be live at 6.55pm with a build-up show followed by a watch-along, followed by a live review of the match. So if you're not going to the game on Monday, you wish to join us. We'll see you there at 6.55. Enjoy the period drop by Skype's news channel. Make sure you download the OneFootball app. Myself and Gonzo, we'll catch you in a bit. <laughs> 